Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dr. Sia channel. Today I have something really special planned. One of the things that's happening in the psychological community right now is we're all really be completely befuddled by this uh, toilet paper hoarding that's going on uh, with the corona pandemic. And first of all, I just want to say my heart goes out to all of those people affected by the corona pandemic, including, I mean, myself as well. I'm also affected. All of us are affected. So let's all of us be really nice to each other and helpful to each other in these times. Now, with that said, another thing that's happening in this corona pandemic is that um, there's toilet paper hoarding going on. And I think all psychologists are really confused right now about how could that happen? What's going on? No one thought that toilet paper was so important to, to people. So what I did is that I luckily found four people who were kind enough to actually be interviewed by me and let me, uh, and let me release the results of the interview with them here on YouTube so that we could all better understand what this toilet paper hoarding is about. Let's get started. So, um, of course, after having interviewed the people that I interviewed, I, I, I have my perception now of what actually is going on, but I don't want to fully influence you only giving you with my perception. What I've done is I have here cards where I've written down extracts from the actual interviews so you can hear, hear what they've said from their own perspective. Okay, so this is um, person number one, and I have, of course, I've been interviewing them for four hours or something, but I just have extracts here, and I'm happy to talk more about um, the kind of things that have been said. Again, how nice are, are these people that they actually come and open up and let me use this for a clip so that we can all better understand each other. It's just really, truly uh, very good people. Thank you so much. Okay, so... Um, Let's just start with this one. So I asked this person, of course, and I've asked the same question to all of them as well. Why did you buy the toilet paper? Um, sorry. No, okay, here, here, yeah, I, yeah, so okay. So, <laughs> okay, are you ready? Why did you buy all that toilet paper? And they say, what would I do if there is no paper? I say, you have no options? And they say, what would those options be? I don't know. I mean, when I read that, I think to myself, I can come up with options for if there's no toilet paper. I can come up with options. And probably you could come up with a lot of them too. But what happened for this person, what it seems like happened for this person is they just couldn't come up with another option. They've just never probably seen another option. They've never heard of another option. And, you know, even though probably, you know, I'm guessing this person showers just as often as we shower and have utilized water and all those, maybe they just never used anything else to clean their bum with. So there's this idea that, you know, if there's no paper, then they're stuck. And then it would make sense that they would rush out and buy all that toilet paper. If you can see no other option to something, and you think that your only choice is to buy toilet paper, well, then it makes sense that you'd freak out about that. Maybe you're really flexible when it comes to food. Maybe you're really flexible when it comes to movies. Maybe you're really flexible when it comes to drinks and everything else that's sort of everyday life stuff. Maybe you're really flexible when it comes to how to travel. But maybe you just don't know a lot about options of cleaning your bum. So toilet paper becomes the only choice. All right. I, write to, uh, I say to the next person I've written here, how much paper did you buy? They say $500 worth. I say, why? And they say, I'm not crazy. I just did not want to be without. I know how people work and I don't want to be left out. So here really, we're not talking about a person who believes themselves to have sort of exaggerated a purchase in any way. This is a person who believes that they have acted rationally based on basically relatively negative beliefs about other people or perhaps accurate or perhaps whatever. But the belief is that, well, I know that other people will go out and hoard. I know that other people will go out and buy it all. So I know how other people work and I don't want to be left out. So if you can't sort of beat them, join them, that kind of thing. Um, 
which I think is really interesting. I think makes a lot of sense if you have that sort of mindset that, that you don't want to be left out, that you don't want to be the one who misses out, and you have this perception that everyone else is getting theirs, and ideas around fairness and justice and sort of if things like that come up, then, you know, it would make sense that you go out and buy all that paper, I suppose. Okay. Why did you buy paper but not other things, I ask? So, we know it's not just the toilet paper stuff that's finishing. It's, people are buying all other stuff, too. So, all right. Why did you buy paper but not other things? And the person says, well, first I thought, what is the one thing we can't be without? And paper came to mind. Then I thought about it more, and then I bought other things like groceries too. How much did you buy? $10,000, they said. So that's interesting, I think, because that's interesting, I think, because it's like the first thing that came to mind was toilet paper, right? The first thing they thought about there was first paper. First, what is something that is an absolute convenience? What is something that is absolutely only about convenience and not about survival at all? Like, you know, maybe I'm thinking about my toilet paper, maybe I'm thinking about my Netflix subscription, maybe I'm thinking about things like what else is completely really not necessary and most of the world could live without it, but it's completely just for convenience alone. And it seems like first this person started thinking, oh, I don't want to be inconvenienced by this pandemic. I don't want to be inconvenienced by it all. And then when it started getting more serious, they started thinking, oh, wait, this is serious. I need to this isn't just going to be inconvenient. I need to be making sure that I don't like starve and stuff. So I need to go and buy other things too. I need to buy groceries. I need to buy survival. And they ended up spending $10,000 for it. That's a lot of money to not be inconvenienced. But it's, it just seems like to some people that sense, that sense of being inconvenienced is... Uh, really a terrible feeling that it's like, why should I have to eat pasta a whole two weeks? I don't want to have to eat whatever's left over in the cupboard. I want to be able to live a nice life, a luxurious life. And, and that makes a lot of sense in that sense. If that's what this means, and it makes a lot of sense because it's like, you know, we don't want to be inconvenienced by things that happen in the world. There are a lot of things happening in the world right now. We don't want to be inconvenienced by them. So we just pretend and move on. We think about it, it's just as crazy that we keep wasting as much. You know, very few people in the world are going, hey, maybe I shouldn't be wasting all that stuff. Maybe I should live like a no waste type of life. Most of us just don't want to be inconvenienced. So, hey, you know, I'll buy stuff and open a packet and throw it all away. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I, I ask, why did you buy the paper? Well, Oh, sorry. Okay. It's my own handwriting. I get confused by my own handwriting. Okay. Why did you buy the paper? I need it. I don't want to be left out. Some similarities there. And I ask very sort of directly, are you a toilet paper hoarder? And the person says, no, I'm not. I saw it on TV and thought I better get in there first. Well, were you first on anything? Like, was there anything that you didn't see happen on TV first? And then sort of you just did it because you thought, oh, other things and they said yeah meat I got that before TV said that meat's running out so that's interesting too because one thing that I've noticed in this person and in all of uh, these said toilet paper hoarders I just want to know we're not actually talking about toilet paper you know not people with actual hoarding disorder but for all of these toilet paper disorder uh, hoarders um, for all of these toilet paper <clears throat> for all of these toilet paper hoarders not a single one of them identified as being a toilet paper hoarder. They all said, yeah, I bought a bunch of toilet paper, but I'm not one of those crazy people in the stores who went and bought all that toilet paper. I'm just the person who bought a lot of toilet paper. And I can tell you honestly, in my efforts to sort of even push in a little bit of like insight there and go, well, you know, if no one is the first person, I mean, I get that statistically there is the first person, but, you know, do you need to be the first person to be something? 
or can you be the second and also be something? You know, can, do you, if I'm eating meat because someone else ate meat first, does that make me a meat eater or does that make the first person a meat eater and me sort of, I'm not a meat eater? In that sense, it's like, just because you're not first doesn't mean you're not something. That's what the point I'm trying to make. But that wasn't there. They all had the perception that their behaviors are rational and based on and triggered and caused by the original hoarder. So that first person who went out and hoarded and was caught on TV, that's the person who caused this within them. There was no recognition of the fact that like for all of these people, when they were out buying toilet paper, the shelves would have been stocked because they wouldn't have been able to hoard otherwise. And if there was a stopping going on at that point, then the sort of this issue never would have happened. But there is this constant idea that I'm not first, so I'm not the one with the problem. I'm just responding to the problem that already exists. Now, a lot of people may be feeling that way that, you know, they're not actually identifying as the people who they think are crazy. They're just responding to the people who they think are crazy. I'm not crazy, I'm just responding to people who I think are crazy in that sense. And I think that's really interesting because first of all, no one's crazy here, but it's that idea of, you know, what do we do when we think that we're surrounded by people who are irrational? What do we do when we think that people are going to behave in certain ways? So it means a lot of our own behaviors will be affected by what we think other people will be like. If we think that people will be cool and calm, then we'll be cool and calm. If we think that people will be crazy and run around and get all you know, hoard up on everything, then we might do the same. But there's also something with that that I don't really like because I think to myself, yeah, I know people are all going to go around and do all these things. People do all these kind of like things all the time. Whenever something gets hard, people make irrational decisions. But there's just this sense I have within me that somehow I'll be fine. That if I have to eat pasta for two weeks, I'll live to tell the story about, did you know that time when your daddy had to live on potato chips because there was nothing else available in the store? I get the sense that uh, whatever happens, that there's this maybe perhaps undying optimism within me and a lot of other people that I've seen that will just be fine. But there is this sort of really rash pessimism within some people that perhaps they won't be fine and perhaps they'll, a lot of things will go south. And then there's this mental inflexibility that goes on that I don't see other options. If I don't have toilet paper, I don't know what else is going to happen. I don't know what to do. So this is the only option I have. So this is what I'm going to do. I get the idea that for a lot of people, when they look back at these times, they I would hope they get insight about what actually happened. You know, when they're sitting there with $10,000 worth of stuff and, and nothing actually happened, I'm, I don't think people will look back at this and go, I learned the lesson or I learned something there. I think this is just the way that some people react. It comes down to other factors. I think it comes down to not knowing why it is that some, you do some of the things that you do. I didn't get a sense with any of the people that I interviewed that they actually understood why they actually did what they did. It was all in response to some trigger. There was no real, hmm, within me I have this or that going on. Now, I have a lot more to talk about this issue, of course, and this video is running really long, but if you all want to know any other questions that I asked, just put it down in the comments. And if I did ask them those questions, I'll let you know uh, what they answered. So uh, this is over four hours of interview. No way am I going to be able to summarize all that here. I hope you learned something about this hum new found human condition called the toilet paper hoarding condition. I hope you learned something. I got to say, after watching this video, I've learned, uh, after doing this video and all these interviews, I've learned a lot, but I'm still confused. Anyway, I hope you subscribe. I hope you click on that uh, update bell button. Um, I've started Instagramming now to let a lot more people know that sort of these videos are happening, but also to sort of just put out some, you know, some positivity out there and some information out there that, that actually is based on psychology as opposed to people just saying things like, buy a guitar because psychology.
<laughs> that's not psychology. Anyway, so I've started putting out some things out there and, and, and I, I hope you enjoyed that too. I'll put the link down there below on that Insta. So anyway, thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Uh...